Hello friend, this video on P block elements part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about halides now. So group 13 elements easily react with uh, halogens to form trihalides. The exception is my thallium. Thallium it doesn't form this, but other than that, the group 13 elements, all these forms halides, boron, aluminium, gallium, they all forms halides, trihalides. And this can be easily prepared by heating this uh, group 13 element. This is my group 13 elements. It can be uh, anything boron, aluminium, gallium, indium with some halogen. Halogen can be fluorine, chlorine, bourbon, bromine, iodine. It forms metal halides. And please note here the fluorine halides are ionic in nature because of the high electronegativity. We have told that. To determine whether a compound is ionic or covalent, we have to see the electronegativity difference and if the electronegativity difference is high, it's ionic, if it is low, it is covalent. So since for fluorine itself, the electronegativity is very high, so generally all the fluorides are ionic and since they are ionic, they have high melting and boiling point because the force of attraction is more, right? This we have learned in the past few chapters where we have told about the ionic compound and the covalent compound and we have told that ionic compound has more melting and boiling point because of the more force of attraction. So if you had doubt in that, you can watch the previous video where we explained why ionic compounds have high melting and boiling point. So similarly, fluorine since it has this more electronegative. So the fluorides are generally ionic with high in melting and boiling point, but other fluorides, chlorides, bromides and iodides, they are covalent. And since they are covalent, they have low melting point. Correct. We'll discuss here bromine chloride. It, is, it easily accepts lone pair electron from uh, ammonia to form BCl3. Why? Because we see bromine has six electrons now and ammonia has one extra lone pair. So it, this guy will take this lone pair and form this compound. And see the side stage will also defend. This is planar. This is sp2. And this is tetrahedral sp3. Right? The shape it also. We'll discuss more about this in the next few slides. And if you see, Aluminium uh, chloride, this achieves a dimer shape. This is the shape of aluminium chloride. You see there are two aluminium chloride molecules. This is my aluminium, this is aluminium, this is a 3D structure, this is my chlorine, green ones are chlorine. And this is how the shape of aluminium chloride. This is, we'll discuss more about aluminium chloride and uh, bromine chloride now, the next few slides. Let's discuss the Boron halide, halide, sorry, the boron chloride, boron halide. Let's discuss the boron halide now. As I've already told, boron always forms covalent bond. Why? Because small size. So boron halide will always be covalent. Correct? Doesn't matter with, with which it is forming the bond, boron, chlorine, or bromine. It doesn't matter. It has to be a covalent bond because boron is small in size. It always forms covalent bond. So boron halides are covalent in nature. Since they are covalent, they are solvent in organic solvent and they are bad connector and why why this happens this also be discussed that uh, covalents are solvent in organic solvent soluble in organic solvent so if you have doubt in this again you can watch the previous video to explain why the covalent compounds are soluble in, in, in organic solvent right and this has sp2 hybridization if you see it has sp2 hybridization because it has only uh, three electrons now one two and three uh, six three electrons pair so sp2 hybridization and 13, 1.3 is the picometer is the length of BF bond. Okay, this is the shape. This is the sp2 hybridized boron trihalides. It has great tendency to accept electron as we explained in the last slide. So it is a Lewis acid. Why? Because it is electron deficient. It has six electrons now. So it will accept electron from ammonia. So you see the reaction. This is my six electrons it has, it has two extra electrons, it accept the electron from ammonia, it becomes tetrahedral, right? From planar to tetrahedral, this is sp2 and this becomes sp3 hybridized. The best part is this, please pay attention here, this is a little tricky part. The Lewis acid character decreases in this format. So the expectation is, since the fluorine is more electronegative, the expectation was that this should be more acidic. Right? So if you compare these three, boron is same in all. If you compare not the difference in the electronegativity of boron, chlorine, and bromine, 
it should be that the br3 should be more acidic correct that should be the case because fluorine is more electronegative but that is not the case because first thing it is lewis acid right and second thing is because the hydrogen halogen boron back pi bonding well i'll discuss what is this let me write this term halogen this happens predominantly with boron and mostly with the uh, fluorines here it maximum fluorine has the maximum tendency of uh, back pi bonding so this is the reason for this behavior so let me discuss this behavior so now we have seen that fluorine has more electrons fluorine is very very hungry right this guy is hungry this guy is crying for electron so what will happen is since fluorine is very much electronic it will share some electron with fluorine so some electrons will flow from here to here right so two p orbitals of fluorine they have lone pairs actually you see so this guy will go to fluorine so fluorine will become happy now correct since fluorine is happy it will behave, behave as weak lewis acid since fluor, fluor, since boron is happy sorry since boron is happy now with electrons from fluorine and this is also called the back donation because uh, fluorine is giving a donation to boron since boron is happy with the electrons it will behave as a weak lewis acid because see the reason why it is behaving as a acid was it is the lewis acid right it was a boron was electron hungry so it was in need of electrons so it reacted with ammonia but in case of this one since the fluorine is satisfying the need of boron boron is happy so this boron is happy in this case right in this case this boron is little okay and in this case the little this boron is little sad because the bromine is not satisfying the need of electron deficient boron but fluorine is very well satisfying the need of electron deficient boron in br3 so this boron is happy since this boron is happy it won't act as lewis acid because it doesn't need electron now it's already happy so it's as i told right all the elements it all the way they react all depends on the stability they want to be happy in life they want to be stable in life so boron wanted electron it was deficient of electron fluorine fluorine was little kind and fluorine gave the electron to boron boron is happy since it is happy it won't act as a strong acid but in case of bbr3 this boron is not happy because this is not getting electron from bromine so it will act as a strong lewis acid compared to bf3 correct and please note fluorine is most kind as compared to chlorine and bromine so this back donation occurs more in fluorine correct because the size of fluorine the size of fluorine is less so the back donation occurs more in case of fluorine hope you understand this concept so since it was a lewis acid it was all the hungerness of bromine that de that determined the acidic nature of uh, boron uh, halides right it was all the hungerness of boron sorry it was all the hungerness of boron that decides the acidic nature of boron halides in case of bf3 the boron is happy with the electron donation back donation from fluorine fluorine so it is not a strong lewis acid in case of boron bromide the boron is not very happy because the boron uh, the bromine is not giving enough electron it is sad and it, it is unstable and it, it is a it is strong lewis acid so let's see aluminium halide now see aluminium halide forms a dimer structure as i told at a temperature below 473 kelvin see if you see aluminium structure here right if you see this aluminium here so i have cl here i have cl here i have cl here. one more aluminium let's suppose i have cl here i have cl here and i have cl here correct so now if you see this aluminium is not happy because it has six electrons two plus two plus two six this is also not happy because it has six electrons so what this guy will do this guy will form a bond with this chlorine so it will get eight electrons now correct and this guy also will form a bond with this electron chlorine So this guy will also eight electrons. So now this is happy. This is happy. Both the aluminium is happy. So that's why it will form this dimer structure where this length is two not six, and this one which I have extra right. This is two to one. 
and the angle is 118 degrees 79. This is the structure of aluminium halide and this is a three dimensional structure. Now the question is why boron is not formed in this country? When boron also has the same issue right as if you see BLs when we see the BLZ3 boron has the same issue if you see boron I have chlorine here I have bromon, uh, boron same issue with the boron also right what we had with aluminium it has example uh, it has BCL3 6 electron it has it is BCL3 6 electrons the same issue why boron is not formed in this bond because boron is very small in size and it cannot handle four chlorine molecules around it see in this case boron is the main guy right boron is the one which is handling here aluminium is the one which is playing the critical role if aluminium if the, the central atom itself is very weak how will it hold four atoms here the boron is very small in size right so it cannot handle four chlorine atoms around it so bcl3 is not forming dimer shape hope you understand this the next question is AlCl3 is dimer but not BCl3. The same thing which I explained. In case of aluminium, if you see, I will discuss once again. It's a little uh, difficult concept. I have aluminium in this fashion, right? Deficient of electrons, both electrons, uh, aluminium, it has six, it has six electrons. It will form a bond with this and form a dimer structure. But when you talk about boron, right, it also has the same problem, but this will not be able to form bond with chlorine because this boron will not be able to handle four chlorine atoms around it because boron is so small it's not able to handle four chlorine atoms. A good question is why BS3 exists but not BCL3? Think. See the last question we draw solved was that ALCL3 and uh, PCL3, we talk about the size of the chlorine, right? The size of the chlorine was something which was uh, responsible for not uh, existence of BCL3. Why BS3 exists then? Think, you'll see that hydrogen size is less. If you compare the size of boron, hydrogen, and chlorine, this is the size. Correct? So if you see, and you see BCL3, boron will not be able to handle four chlorine atoms around it. So BCL3 won't exist. But BS3, yes, it can because boron can handle a four hydrogen atom. And the shape is almost similar to what we have for ALCL3. Dimer shape. So here also if you see BS3, if you form the BS3 shape, this is my boron, this is E, this is H, and this is H. One more boron if you form. Right? So this boron has six electrons, two plus two plus two. This is also six electrons. They are both sad. They are both sand, right? So what they'll do? They'll form a bond like this. And now both will become happy. Correct? And thus it will form this kind of structure, timer structure. This is my boron, this is my boron, and now all the white ones are hydrogen. Correct? Now thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos. Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.